few things inspired the imagination and enthusiasm of spaceflight enthusiasts, including myself, by the way, than Yusaku Mezawa's Dear Moon mission. And it came as a tremendous disappointment, I think, to just about everyone when we heard that this mission was going to be canceled. An opportunity for not astronauts, not scientists, not engineers, but rather artists musicians, people who would experience the moon in an entirely different way and bring their experiences back to Earth, orbiting the moon for the first time with an all-civilian crew, this was an opportunity that inspired the imaginations of just about everybody, I think. And yes, very disappointing indeed when this mission was shut down. But the question remains to lots of people right now is why was this mission canceled at all? Why did Meizawa lose confidence in the mission and the scheduling? Why did he think that the uncertainty of a future Dear Moon mission was cause enough to shut the whole project down? I mean, Starship is making some very big strides at the moment, and I think we could definitely say with some confidence that human missions are going to be taking place in the next five years or so. Why could Dear Moon not wait for five years? Was Dear Moon cancelled for the reasons that Meizawa said, or was there another reason that we're not being told about? Good afternoon, everyone. I hope my viewers are all doing well. Once again, coming to you from South Carolina. And again, thanks to you guys. I really appreciate it. I would like to extend my special appreciation to the following new Patreon supporters. Stephen Sharmer, Jason Gonding, Stephen Ross, and Nancy Holo. Because of your support, that's what allows me to not only do things like come home when I have a family crisis, but also attend some very big launch events and other space-related conferences, etc. And I will be going, hopefully, to Saxavord by the end of the month to cover a very special launch, the first ever orbital vertical launch from Western Europe. Okay, all of that having been said, if you're interested in supporting this channel, Channel, all the details in the description. So what I'm going to be doing in the course of this video is quoting extensively from an article that's entitled SpaceX's Starship Moon Mission Cancellation is a Little Suspicious by Will Lockett. A journalist who talks a lot about SpaceX and his opinions vary. I don't support a lot of what he says, so this is sort of a reaction video, but nevertheless, I think he had some interesting interesting insights. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in here. Quote, one of Starship's tantalizing possibilities is bringing space travel to the masses, or at the very least, the wealthy masses. Okay, well, the idea is to bring space travel to everyone, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Because Starship is fully reusable, its price per launch could be as low as $2 million. Combine that with its utterly vast payload capacity and cavernous cargo space, and you could feasibly use Starship as an ultra-fast, long-haul flight alternative that can go from New York to Sydney in less than an hour. Tickets for such a price would also cost about the same as a first-class ticket for the same journey on a jumbo jet. If your pockets go a little deeper, you could use Starship as a space hotel that orbits the Earth for several days or even private lunar missions. So billionaire Yuzaku Meizawa realized this early on and way back in 2018, he booked a private Starship mission to take him and his artistic friends to the moon by 2023. As you may have noticed, such a mission didn't occur 
Turner last year, and Starship is far from ready to conduct human spaceflight. Well, Meizawa recently announced that he had canceled this mission due to these delays. However, I am not convinced that this is why Meizawa canceled. By the way, I agree, I'm not convinced either. Let me explain. Meizawa's mission was known as the Dear Moon Project. The idea was to take Meizawa and eight artists he invited onto the missions for free on a week-long circumlunar spaceflight around the moon. Meizawa wanted to inspire these artists and in turn promote peace around the world. Initially, Dear Moon was going to use a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, and by the way, it was also going to use a modified Crew Dragon and only maybe four or so astronauts were going to go along on that ride. By the way, I think that would have been a lot more doable had Meizawa gone with that option. Nevertheless, SpaceX changed course and decided not to make a human spaceflight version of the Falcon Heavy. Instead, it focused on developing Starship, then known as the BFR. As such, in 2018, Meizawa booked his launch on the yet-to-fly rocket with the expectation that by, that by 2023, the rocket would be ready for Dear Moon. However, at the beginning of June, the Dear Moon Project announced that they had canceled their Starship flight. The announcement read, quote, Unfortunately, however, launch within 2023 became unfeasible, and without clear schedule certainty in the near term, it is with a heavy heart that Meizawa made the unavoidable decision to cancel the project. On the surface, this explanation makes sense. SpaceX has struggled to get Starship off the ground. It took them far longer than expected to develop and build the first full-scale rocket. The first full-scale test launch also obliterated the custom launch pad and had in-flight mishaps. As such, Starship had its launch license revoked for over six months and has been under increasing scrutiny by authorities dramatically slowing down progress. With his scheduled launch date passing, surely it makes sense for Meizawa to cancel the mission. Well, not really. As I write this, Starship is getting ready for another test flight and SpaceX is gearing up for commercial operations within the next year or two. As such, Starship could be ready for human space flight in possibly three or four years. Why can't Dear Moon wait that long? Developing rockets for human space flight, particularly fully reusable giant ones like Starship, takes an awfully long time. Delays like this would have been wholly expected. The fact that Starship is undertaking test flights and seems incredibly close to entering commercial service shows that it will be more than likely ready for Dear Moon in the not-so-distant future. Surely, Meizawa can wait just a little longer for his monumental mission, so why cancel? And why cancel now and not back in 2021 or 2022 when it was obvious that they would never be able to hit their 2023 launch date? Well, I think something else caused Meizawa to cancel. That's costs. The delay SpaceX has encountered, combined with the vast amount of self-inflicted damage to their launch pad and increased scrutiny by the FAA, have pushed Starship's costs way past its initial budget. Even with the original development budget, Starship's launch costs would start at $10 million per launch and only drop to $2 million once the project was scaled and running frequent flights. But to give you an idea of how much development costs have ballooned, SpaceX has spent over over $5 billion on Starship so far, spending $2 billion on it in 2023 alone. Musk's initial estimate for the development cost of Starship is around $5 billion. As it stands, Starship development will likely cost way over $10 billion before it is ready for human spaceflight. And incidentally, I agree with these figures, and NASA is only footing the bill for about half of this $10 billion figure. And incidentally, in order to deliver on what they have promised to NASA, SpaceX has to do an unmanned flight to the moon and two human-rated landings on the moon as well in order to actually get all of that $5 billion or so that they've been promised by NASA. So really, when it comes down to it, the NASA money hasn't contributed a whole lot to these development costs. 
So the article concludes thusly, quote, I suspect that Maizawa booked his Starship tickets expecting to pay that $10 million price tag in mind. But during 2023, after failed test launches and dramatic redesigns, it became apparent just how much more expensive Starship development would be and therefore how much more costly Starship flights would be. It takes time to calculate potential launch costs, so it is feasible that Maizawa was only recently informed about how much his little moon mission would actually cost. I think this is why he canceled, as he either can't afford or is unwilling to pay that amount. However, being a billionaire and a friend of Musk, he didn't want to tell the world about this and so made the delay excuse up. Okay, that last little dig against Musk and billionaires in general, I don't see the point of that. Just because you're a billionaire doesn't mean that you're going to look out for all the other billionaires. Obviously, Jeff Bezos doesn't do that. Neither does just about anybody else who's a billionaire. They're not going to cover up for their billionaire buddies unless they have a very good reason to do it. So, Mezawa has a reputation for blowing his fortune in a huge way. He runs through money at insane rates. Perhaps not as bad as Elon Musk when we're talking about the enormous amount of money that Elon spent on gobbling up Twitter, but Mezawa doesn't have the option of getting a new 40 some odd billion dollar pay package from Tesla, so he might be running a little short on funds. I don't think he ever thought that this was going to be a $10 million mission, though. It absolutely could not be. Assuming $10 million launches, it takes 10 refueling missions to even get Starship completely refueled to the point to when it could have handled a lunar mission. Now, orbiting the moon, that might not require the same amount of fuel, but I kind of doubt it. Starship has been experiencing some significant challenges with its heat shield, and a lunar trajectory re-entry is much, much more difficult for a heat shield to endure than just a typical orbital re-entry. We're talking thousands and thousands of kilometers an hour faster for a lunar re-entry than an orbital re-entry. It's very possible that it's going to be quite some time before Starship is going to have a heat shield that's capable of dealing with that kind of punishment. Therefore, it would have been necessary to have a transfer of crew from a crew dragon or actually two crew dragons into Starship and then to have a similar transfer in orbit when Starship returned, which would require a lot more fuel to decelerate Starship so that it could enter into a stable orbit as opposed to using the atmosphere to slow down. So I have a feeling it would have required at least as many refueling missions. And then also, if you include those two Crew Dragon missions, well, the cost of this mission is really starting to escalate at that point. If you're looking at $60 million per Crew Dragon, that's $120 million. Even if it's only $10 million per refueling mission and $10 million for the Lunar Starship itself, that's that's another $110 million. You're looking at a quarter of a billion dollars minimum. And again, that's assuming $10 million per launch. And I don't think that SpaceX is going to be able to offer even this kind of price point, not on the early missions. There's just way too much amortized expenses to make up for before the price point is going to start coming down. Keep in mind that if Starship were making, say, a million dollars profit on every launch, in other words, 100% profit on a $2 million cost, it would require a thousand missions in order to get just a billion dollars worth of profit. A thousand missions. And somehow, I really don't think that Starship is only going to be running a million dollars per launch for SpaceX. I really think it's going to require a lot more than that, especially considering that the new heat shield now has an ablative layer beneath the heat tiles. This strategy suggests that SpaceX knows that the heat tiles, at least not all of them, are going to stay adhered to Starship during the re-entry 
re-entry process and an ablative layer beneath may protect the ship, but it's going to sustain some damage in order to protect the ship. The ablative layer will have to be replaced in between every flight, at least the part beneath the tiles that come loose, and then of course the tiles are going to have to be replaced as well. All of that is going to take time, it's going to take money, and it's going to make it pretty damn difficult for this ship to fly three times a day. Nevertheless, it's probably a pretty quick fix, but anything that's different than the original idea for Starship, than the original concept of a 100% reusable ship, is going to jack up the price, at least for the early missions. So yeah, I think it's very possible that Meizawa may have gotten at least a little bit of sticker shock, but at the same time, he shouldn't have been that surprised given the development costs of this rocket, and I think it's very possible that he also just ran through way too much of his own money to sustain this mission, which is very unfortunate because I think it would have been a magical thing. Thank you very much for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. Once again, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and PayPal. Details in the description. And as always, stay angry about space.